the ball state they played well we had issues most of the night but somehow we pulled it out so i asked trey about that moment in the first half when he he took the three and then you called timeout right after and you left him in the game he came out with a ton of energy there what was the reasoning behind leaving him in and, and not sitting him down after that play? You, you can't take guys' initiative away. Like, what I told him was you can't compound a bad defensive play with a bad offensive play. So that's what he did. He made a bad defensive play, and then he took a bad shot. And that's, that's just, that's ignorant. But you got to ride with your stallion sometimes, right? Like, you have to talk to him and communicate to him and explain it to him. And that's what I did. Drew, uh, yeah, there we go, a Drew question. Uh, for you, just Trey was a guy that's been able to steal but also has had to juggle the fouls as well. Just how have you been able to find a happy medium and how can tonight help with that? Well, in practice, we gave him uh, four fouls. So uh, that's something that we've been working with him with. Uh, he is an aggressive defender and we have to understand, and we do, that he, he is going to try to make plays on the basketball. But we've been telling him uh, just to limit just to limit his gambles in situations, especially being on the ball, guard with your, your feet and your chest. Uh, I thought he did a much better job of that tonight. And, you know, he was finally able to, to stay on the floor more than uh, about 15, 16 minutes. Keith, for you, you guys were sending doubles against Sparks throughout this contest. Just how much did that help seeing the reward of having such pressure on a guy that can at times impose his will? I thought that was the best thing we did defensively. I didn't think we were very good defensively, but we did a good job of doubling him and getting out of the double team. And, uh, you know, if he has a normal night, which which he's a beast, right, then we, we lose. Now, they had some other good nights, but it wasn't because we doubled. They didn't score when we doubled. They scored on dribble drives, bad containment, bad shrinking of the floor. Um, we have to get better. Like we told them, we said, hey, you got to celebrate this and love it because you, you should celebrate wins regardless of the circumstances. But if you want to achieve the goals that you have, you have to get better defensively. And I think part of it, part of it is we're a little limited. You know, just again, I don't want to make any excuses, but we tire. And we're playing longer intervals than we probably should be playing, and we have to we we have to fix that. I think we'll we'll fix it as we get a little healthier. Coach, you made the decision not to play Day Day for the rest of the second half, despite being down double figures. You got good contributions from McGriff. Say so that. I, I, what do you mean? I played first half. half. Oh, first, first half. half. Sorry, yeah, first half when. Uh, okay. With deficit. Yeah, you confused me. <laughs> I did set up some in the second half yeah, too, yeah. though. But mainly, you see a lot of times coaches with their best players, they're sort of play them in their last few minutes just to avoid going down further. Was you ever concerned about the, the lead possibly uh, getting away from you, or were you confident with the veterans, especially with Brewer taking over as the offensive playmaker? It's a good question. I, I, I feel like we I have confidence in all those guys, Matouche and Quincy McGriff. Um, I thought I thought to begin with, Day Day had a rough, rough time of it early. So that's that was part of my decision, was hey he's got two fouls and then I played Trey Clark with two fouls and he fouled so I really didn't want to go there and then I thought with two fouls and we're not guarding very well to begin with he may be a little tentative so I just decided to just sit him now I I played other guys before in my career it's just instincts it just I didn't I didn't feel like we were in trouble I felt like I got him in trouble a little bit you know we we got behind early then we full court pressured them and then we, we weren't any good in that and then they got up easy ones and then once we settled back in I thought we were we were decent and then we, for some reason we kept making mistakes and then they get up nine on us again and that's a bad that's a bad way to go when you come back and cut it to three or four then you got to take the next step but I, I just decided to, to sit him there. And that probably didn't help him any scoring in the second half because he sat there so long. But I felt like at that time it was the right thing to do. Drew, no consultation on that one. Drew didn't consult me on that. He, he didn't say put him in, so I figured he was fine with it. I rolled the plan. <laughs>
Drew, just looking strictly by points scored, a really strong game by the, the backcourt. And obviously, Day Day's a guy with, with how much noise he's been making. He's going to be getting a lot of attention defensively. But did, did, did this game kind of encapsulate just the, the depth you guys have there, the other pieces that in the event where, where Day Day is not scoring 20, 25 points a night, you guys have multiple guys that are that are capable of stepping up and scoring baskets for you? Um, yeah, I think it's something we've known all along that, that we've had uh, good backcourt play. Um, you know, Tevin is, you know, day by day getting getting healthier, getting uh, back to himself. And I thought tonight when, when uh, well, earlier today, when, when Day Day had his struggles, Tevin was able to carry some of that offensive load. And, and Trey Clark also stepped up as well. And then just the production um, from a Kareem with his energy. And also Quincy McGriff made some shots in the first half. So um, you, you look at the contributions coming from, from different ways. And, and even Day Day just, you know, staying patient within the game, right? That's, that's, a, that's a tough thing for a scorer to do sometimes, especially after the success that he's had, is to keep patient and feel like it's going to come to you at, at some point. And I thought he did a really good job of that. And he was ready to go in the second half and make some shots and make, make some plays for us. I feel like our, our biggest problem right now is just our lack of front court depth. Like, we just can't stay fresh in the front court. Like, those guys are not ready to play more than 16, 17, 18 minutes. And again, I think when we get a little better depth in the front court, that, that will help us. Just I, just I just don't think we we can stay fresh with those guys right now. And I think it affects you, it affects you in multiple ways, but especially at the defensive end. When there are 11 lead changes in a game, especially down the stretch, <laughs> this is for either of you, how much more of an impetus is it on being mentally stronger and just being that mentally stronger team? Very true. Um, you know, in, those, in the midst of all those lead changes, you know, we, we, we think about how connected we are as a group because, um, you know, early early in that game, we kind of got, we got, got disjointed. But we kept reminding them that play by play, stay together, keep going, keep going after it, getting stops. And when you get down to that crunch time, there is a there is a lot of mental that goes into it because your body's probably tired. You might want to take the easy way out. So you have to be as detailed and focused as, as possible. And that's not just one person, that's going to be the whole totality. Yeah, I, th I think I didn't particularly like the way we won the game. I like that we won the game. Don't take me, don't get me wrong, but I'd rather win it with a defensive stop than an offensive play. Now, they stopped us on a couple of possessions that had we made one or two of them, it might have been a little different deal. But I mean, we just have to play better defense. Like that's the that's it's so obvious to me, you know that that's the key for us. Like I, like I didn't even think we were any good on offense really, and we still. You know, we shoot 11 for 22 from three. Like, like guys like McGriff and Matouche, they're good offensive players, man. I mean, we got a lot of good, like, skilled guys, but we have to be better at that other end if we're ever going to get what we want. Which, again, that's a work in progress. But we, we, I think they understand it. They just haven't been able to totally implement it yet. For either of you, are, are we starting <coughs> to see stretches of fully healthy version of Tevin Burr? Because I know at the end of the first half, he, he started to make some tough shots, and it seems like he's just moving better out there overall. We've kind of monitored him. You know, we try to monitor, we try to, two days before the game, we hit him pretty hard. And then the day before the game, we try to pull back a little bit. Um, and Kareem, Kareem does a hell of a job. So, you know, I try to get him rest before the five minute mark, you know, because I think it was three and a half tonight, right? And I tried to get him, and he made, Kareem made one bonehead play that was just straight, just misunderstanding the play, right? But what are you gonna do? He went three and one again. He was 17 what, one coming in. But he he's an unbelievable backup, you know? So, and he's gonna be more than that down the line, but he's allowed us to be able to play, to rest Tevin. So I, I, still, t I still think Tevin's three, four weeks away from, from where he can be. But he's a good player. I mean, I think it affects him defensively where he's he's not pressuring the ball as hard as he's capable of because he, he's just 
he's trying to get through, which you can't blame him. And we need him out there too. So, Ball State uh, was a little in, uh, different compared to other teams in that they have guards that are not necessarily forwards, but truly bigger guards, six seven, six eight, and a few times, especially took Trey Williams off the bounce at the four spot. Is that just a situation where? You're going to need Trey to improve that defensively, or is once you get healthier, you can have other fours the matchup dependent that that can sort of defend that. Well, I think you know, I think he has to get better. Um, but again, he played 28 when I really don't want to play him that much. You know, I think if he's fresher, he'll make less mistakes. Like he got back cut on Mickey Pearson, which if Mickey Pearson makes a three on us, I'm fine with that. Like you can't get back cut on Mickey Pearson, right? Like those, and we made mistakes like that pretty much most of the night. Like uh, uh, Sellers, for instance, I thought Sellers was great tonight, but we let him get to his left hand. Like you can't, you can't let him get to his left hand. I thought, I thought Coleman, we did a relatively good job on him, but the, but the plan with him was, hey, we gotta make him drive it all the way to the rim because he likes to bounce you back. Like we just have to get better at those type of things, and. Uh, we, we still haven't quite put all that together with our whole group, you know. And again, when you're switching a lot like we did, regarding all of them, so like you have to know, well, this guy's this, this guy's that, you know. Anything to add on that? Um, no, I, I, I agree with you. Trey has to get better, um, and, and he will. Um, I do believe the style of defense that we play, you need depth, right? I think that's, that's what's really shown when you're picking up 94 feet consistently every possession, it becomes difficult to sustain that for for 40 minutes with the same guys. Hang, I mean, if you look at the stat sheet tonight, we got our, our starting our starting five was all above 25 minutes, right? And and two of those guys are are <coughs> bigs. They're they're it's a lot of possessions. We're asking them to do a lot, you know, on the defensive end as well as on the offensive end. And, um, when we get uh, fully healthy, I think you, you'll see a different, uh, style, different style of pressure um, with more energy and, and less mistakes. And, and well, we, tr we tried to tire them because we didn't think their depth was great either, um, and probably unsuccessfully. We had little stretches where I thought they were dead on their feet, but then we were a little dead on our feet too. You know, so that, that's really what we're trying to do all year is use our depth to tire people. But we probably tired ourselves a little. Now they, again, like Drew said, we're, we're more of a passing lane team, forced turnovers team. They're more of a pack line team. They went under a lot of ball screens and things like that. So they were able to play their guys probably a little bit longer than we did because we're using a lot of energy in the full court, which maybe wasn't very smart. But we felt like, we felt like that that was our plan, same plan that we used pretty much against Mitchell, trying to tire them so they don't shoot the ball as good, but we we didn't do a great job. How much is this performance, considering that you have Marshall up next, who's considered one of the lead offensive teams, and Tadion Kinsley, an outstanding guard, do you feel like the defense you've shown so far this year is going to be good enough to be able to beat them, or is there going to be improvements in the next few days in order to contain them? We're going to have to play better. I played them a hundred times. So the D'Antonio's are, they're the ones that brought the European style to the NBA and now to college basketball. All the stuff that he's running, he's the best at running it of anybody in the country. Everybody's copying him and his brother, right? But he's the best at it of anybody. And he, he doesn't care if they throw the ball out of bounds. Like you, like there's nobody better than him. So. To answer your question, we're gonna to have to be a hell of a lot better to, to guard them. Now we guarded them pretty good last year. And look at we we uh, we gotta be able to mix our defenses, which we haven't been able to play zone for whatever reason. We 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 keep messing it up. You know, so we have to make them understand that that's part of it. We have to get better at that too. Because you have to mix with them or they'll beat you up. And, and again, like you said, they're you know, Kinsey's got a lot of pro scouts looking at him because of his size and athleticism. He, he might end up being a better pro than he is a college player. That's how crazy it is. Because the NBA is a little different. Um, but it's going to be a challenge. And, you know, we're going to take tomorrow off. So we'll get, we'll get three good days to, 
Now we do a lot of the same things they do, but we don't do them as good as they do them. You know, we, we probably, we, but we, we know what we have to do against them. It's just whether we can execute it or not. Anything to add on that? No. Drew, just an update on Joe, just had a chance to participate in pregame warmups. Just although he did not play today, how excited are you for his potentially soon to be coming return? Well, I'm, I'm excited for Joe to get back out there um, and, and, and do what he enjoys doing, which is playing the game of basketball. Um, for him, right now, he's just in, in the stage of, of getting healthy. All right, we want to we want to put him back on the court at, at his strongest, um, and he's he's been great in practice, good in his workouts, and and today probably you know in the warm up line, you know, impressed some people with some <coughs> dunks. So uh, we hope to have Joe back as soon as possible. We could have played him at night. Like I, I didn't see the point in it. Like first off, his ankle's not very strong. He hasn't gone live in practice. He did a little bit, right? Like yeah. hardly any. Um, like we got to look long term with these guys, and you know he's he's a he's a big piece for us. You know, so we didn't want him to tweak it and be out another three weeks. You know, we we can't control that, but we can we can at least be intelligent. You know, and we felt like. Those three guys have done a good job for us, so why, why rush them? You know? Was it anything complicated from Kentucky just extending in, or was it just complete, uh, without going to specifics, was, was it not connected to that? His ankle? Yeah. No, he just he turned that thing like crazy at Akron. Okay. You know, I'm going to quit going there pretty soon. Like every time I go there, somebody gets hurt. So we win, but it's not worth the price. So last time we had Trey Williams hurt there. This, and then I had, I got COVID, so I'm gonna have to go. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, one question. Uh, we talked about newcomers to the roster and, and playing them, but Coach Drew, you're a newcomer to the staff. Uh, what, how has your experience been so far with the team? And, and Coach Jan Roy, how, how has he been, his contributions to the staff so far? I'll go first. So uh, <laughs> I won a lot of games with this guy, man. You know, he won two state championships together, um, won a lot of games at Akron together. Um, he's not my son, but like, I feel like when he was 12 years old, I felt connected immediately. Um, he's got unbelievable toughness, but he's got tremendous compassion. So he's helped our team. He's helped him, he's, he's helped him uh, become more accountable He's helped him learn how to win. Um, you know, uh, you can't really argue with his career. You know, he's, I think he's all-time leader in assists in Germany um, for a guy that really didn't have a lot of scholarships out of high school. Uh, now I knew he was good, and I'm smarter than most people, right? Um, but I just think he's helped us. And I thought, you know, the other thing is, is he's a family member, so it really didn't affect our staff at all. You know, they all, Ricky played with him, Terry coached him, you know, Charles been around him for 20 some years. So he's like, you can't get a perf more perfect fit for our program than him. But I just think that toughness and that winning mentality rubs off. And then he's so, he, he, he uh, he's, he's so, close to having played that they respect that as well. So I I think it was I think it was a brilliant hire. <laughs> Wait, can I stroke myself on that one? It's a good hire for me, right? Um, for me I'm I'm proud of proud and excited about my choice to to be here, uh, to join to, to join the staff and um, you know I played for Coach Danbrock, like he said, and I've uh, been teammates with Rick, and I used to attend Coach Wigan's basketball camps, and I was telling him that the other day. So I've always had this relationship with, with everybody on staff. So it, it made things a bit easier that I, the, the faces were familiar, the relationships were already there. And then it was, from that point, it was just coming together and growing. Um, you know, I think as a staff, we, we're, we're doing that each and every day, just trying to be the most connected as a staff we can be, because you you have to 
because our guys, our guys are evaluating us every day as players, right? They, we're asking them to be together and be connected. So we have to show that too. Um, and it's a real thing with us. It is family, um, like you mentioned. And uh, you know, when it when it's a when it comes to the players, I just think it is a responsibility of mine to 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 help them, right? To to be um, not only a leader, but to be to show them what what service looks like as well, um, on and off the floor. Uh, so. You know, the X's and O's, we can draw those up all day long, but when it comes to the relationships with the guys, those are something that you have to fight for and, and treat with, with great care each and every day. Good question. Thank you. Tristan, I'm tired of always telling you good questions. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the rest of you, good questions to you. <laughs>